Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at what you should buy first when building an Adeptus Mechanicus army for the first time, as well as what to avoid and how the comp patrols stack up against each other. However, before we do that, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsors, which is ourselves. If you're looking for a place to shop for Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Horus Heresy, and many other brands, as well as card games and board games and imported snacks on the internet in the United States, check out the link in the description down below or visit VentureTradeCo.com. We carry a wide variety of products and ship within the United States with free shipping on orders of $140 or more. And you can find a lot of rare kits on our website, so do check us out. Once again, that's VentureTradeCo.com, link in the description down below. Now let's jump right into the content. Anyway, to begin with, whenever you're starting an army for the first time, you should always consider the Combat Patrol. And right now, the Adeptus Mechanicus have two different Combat Patrol options. The first one being the old one that we've covered before, but let's do a quick rundown of that again. So what do you get in this Combat Patrol? First you get a Tech Priest Engine Seer, which would cost you $35 if bought individually. Then you get a unit of 10 Skitari, which would cost you $55. You also get a Dune Crawler, which would run you $80, and then a unit of Catafrons, which would cost you $60 individually. And all combined, this would cost you a total of $230, however you can get it for $160 when buying the Combat Patrol. And this really shows you the savings as you save a total of $70, which essentially means you're getting that Dune Crawler for a low price of $10, as opposed to buying everything individually. Now, in addition to that, you can save even more by buying it at a 15% discount on websites such as VentureTradeCo.com for $136. That's quite the amazing savings. Now, one other thing to consider that we haven't considered in the past because there are two different options is the point value of the different boxes. In this case, the old box would give you 480 points, assuming you built all of the most expensive points options out of the different kit. Not necessarily the configuration that they tell you to build for that specific combat patrol, but rather building things like breachers and Skitari rangers in order to kind of maximize your point spend. All in all, as you can see, this gives you a pretty decent 500 point army, though the HQ choice is a little weaker. In addition to that, if you're building those breachers as opposed to destroyers, you end up with a good mix of melee and shooting options. Now that being said, let's take a look at the other Comp Patrol box that just recently came out. The new Comp Patrol comes with the following options. The first of those options is a Tech Priest Manipulus, which individually would cost you $40. A unit of 10 Skitari, similar to the previous Comp Patrol, which would cost you $55. In addition to that, you get 3 Service Raiders, which would cost you $60 individually, and a unit of 5 Taraxi, which would cost you $60 a pot individually. All in all, this comes out to a total of $215, if bought individually, giving you a smaller savings of only $55. However, that still means you're getting those Skitari for free, so you're still getting a decent value for buying these units. Now, the big thing that comes up with this Combat Patrol is obviously the points discrepancy from the previous Combat Patrol, as this one only adds up to a total of 345 points, if you build all of the most expensive options out of all of these kits. Now that being said, I will say the rules for this Comp Patrol are much more interesting if you're playing that game mode on the tabletop, so I definitely prefer it in that sense, but the points value is definitely very lacking when considering building a 500 point army. Now that being said, I wouldn't malign it too much, as at the end of the day all the kits you're getting are pretty good, and I do like that there's a variety of different options that you can pick up, as the Cerberus and Taraxi are always good, the Manipulus is pretty fun, and the Skitari are definitely something you want a little bit of, at least in every army. Now with all that in mind, if you're considering buying one or the other, I would definitely say consider buying the old one over the new one, not simply because of the points discrepancy or the better savings, but rather because the old one is currently discontinued, so it's only going to be available as supplies last. So once it's gone, it's pretty much going to be gone, and it's going to be hard to find. By buying the old one, you kind of assure yourself a nice kit with that nice centerpiece model in the form of a Dune Crawler, and the new Combat Patrol is going to be around for a long time, so you can easily hold off on buying it and then purchase it when you're looking to make your second purchase, as it's a good expansion for your army. However, in both cases, this really does show a flaw with the Adeptus Mechanicus, in that the Admech army is a very expensive one to build, as even with all of the savings, you're only getting so few points. At least at the end of the day, the variety of different box options does give you some savings and some opportunity to buy some of these expensive kits at a discount so that it kind of takes away some of that pain. And with that being said, we kind of cover the two things you should buy first when building any army, which is the combat patrols. And like I said, you can buy one of each and be very happy because the two units of Skitari are perfectly fine and will go into a lot of different armies. Even when they're a little bit weaker, there's usually some room for the Skitari to do something. And usually there's some kind of opportunity to build an army around them within the different codex options. 
Now, moving on to the individual kits, let's talk about kits you should consider buying first, as there's a few good options to start out with, and maybe some of the options that you want to buy along one of these kits in order to start off your army. And this is not an extensive and exhaustive list of things you should consider buying, but these are some options you can look at. I will say once again, the biggest problem with all these options is just the points cost, because at the end of the day, you're basically paying a dollar per point, if not more, and that can be kind of a bit of a pain. Now, a few things you want to consider buying initially is things like the Iron Striders, which are very good units and have a variety of different build paths, especially if you magnetize your models, giving you a lot of versatility and a lot of options when putting them on the tabletop. In addition to that, additional Catafrons are always fun, as the Catafrons can be very versatile on the tabletop as well, building into the very tanky melee-focused breachers that still have pretty good shooting output, as well as sometimes being built into the destroyers, which are okay shooting units. Now, in both cases, I would really recommend magnetizing these units, as switching between the different weapons available to the breachers and the destroyers is a very beneficial thing. So, I will definitely say, buy some magnets and a little hand drill when buying your models, so that you can magnetize them and save yourself a lot of trouble down the line. Don't forget to also make sure all of the magnets are facing the same way when magnetizing your models, as that allows you to swap out different arms and different pieces really easily, as opposed to having to always make sure you get the right ones to the right models. Now let's kind of move on to things that you might want to consider buying, but only buy if you're going into a specific build path. The first thing you can kind of consider are the castle on robots. I wouldn't say they're a particularly amazing unit, but the major benefit they have is that they cost a lot of points, so if you're just trying to get an army off the ground as quickly as possible, the castle on robots will quickly eat up a lot of points, and they're pretty easy to paint and build, so ultimately you can get them up and running pretty quickly, and basically two boxes of them give you about 500 points with that data smith. That's a fourth of your army for a 2,000 point game. And for a 1,000 point game, you can still use one unit of them combined with a combat patrol, and you're pretty much at 750 points if you bought the old combat patrol. So that's kind of the benefit, even if they're not the best unit in the world, they do give you that kind of option to build an army really quickly, and they're not the worst unit either. Now another thing you can kind of consider are something like the Electro Priests. The Electro Priests are nice, but the one thing I would say when you're considering them is only buy them if you're planning to go into their specific sub-faction, as they're not necessarily the best unit and they can be kind of expensive for the points to dollar ratio, though when you're playing that specific sub-faction, they do a lot of work and they can be a lot of fun. I do think that sub-faction is going to be a fun one, and when we cover the sub-factions, I'm definitely going to be looking at that one, as well as I think one or two others that really caught my attention. Now, that being said, let's take a look at things you should probably avoid buying early on when you're starting out. I would say automatically you want to avoid buying any kind of big expensive characters until you kind of know what your army is going for, and this kind of applies to every army out there. So for now, I would say skip out on Belisarius Call until you know you definitely want him, as otherwise you might have a little bit of trouble getting him into a 500 point game or even a 1000 point game without sacrificing too much. Now, in addition to that, I'd avoid things like the Archaeopter just when starting out an army as flyers can be a little complicated, and while I haven't dived into rules too particularly hard, I do think the Archaeopters are going to be a little bit lacking in this edition, as all the different changes to the flyers have definitely hit them pretty hard. However, with that being said, the Archaeopter might be better than I thought, and in that case, it's still a fine purchase, but hold off until you're ready to buy it for a bigger force, as opposed to getting it right off the bat, and then having difficulty finding a place for it in your army. Now with that being said, I would say those are kind of the things to think about, and most other options are pretty purchasable early on. Obviously, I would definitely say avoid things like the Engine Seer and some of the other character models you can get within box sets, as getting them in box sets definitely saves you a lot of money in the long run, and a lot of the individual models from Games Workshop are a little bit overpriced in my opinion, so it's always good to have an option to get them within a box set, as opposed to buying them individually for $40 a model or $35 in the case of the Engine Seer. Though, lucky for you, both are available in box sets, and you can even find something like a Tech Priest Dominus in something like the Boarding Patrol for the Adeptus Mechanicus, or some of the old box sets that came with a Dominus as well. In either case, let me know in the comments down below if you've enjoyed this video, and if you have any recommendations for what new players should buy or look into when starting an Adeptus Mechanicus army. In addition to that, if you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe, and share this video with anyone you think will benefit from it, as that definitely helps the video out and helps them out at the same time, which is a win-win proposition. In either case, thank you for watching, have a great day, and see you next time when we cover some of the sub-factions for the Adeptus Mechanicus. And have a great day, bye.